This is Road Noise, episode number 43, Dealing with Divorce. Hello and welcome again to the Road Noise Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Blackston. You're sitting alongside me in the passenger seat as we learn to live life one mile at a time. I'm on my commute this morning to Winsboro, South Carolina, and then I'm going to head on down to Walterboro, South Carolina, not very far away from Charleston. And it's going to be a full week. It's going to be a Monday through Friday week as I have it planned. Now, who knows, that may change, but... Uh, As I have it planned, I'm going to be gone a full week, and it's not going to be an easy one for me being away from the family for this long. I don't like to stay a week away, but it kind of became necessary. I didn't get a chance to work last week. Actually, I got a chance to work last week, but the billing is going to be um, mailed to me. I don't get that check immediately like I do at my other places, and so I'm kind of making up some income for a couple of weeks and I'm going to have to work a little extra time away from the family and uh, that's kind of uh, fitting for this episode because I'm going to talk about family and especially marriage and what happens when marriage goes bad and you have divorce and we're going to talk about dealing with divorce from the standpoint of or at least my viewpoint, is from someone who grew up as a child of divorce. Uh, Divorce happened in my family when I was very young, and I dealt with it all of my childhood for the most part and all of my teenage years. And even into adulthood, there have been lasting effects from the divorce of my mother and father. And I'm going to talk about it in this episode from the viewpoint of a child who is going through it alongside the parents. See, a lot of parents, as they're going through divorce, don't think about the fact that the children are going along with it, if you have children. I mean, some people get divorced and they don't have children yet, and that makes it a lot easier, but there are still things you have to consider when you're dealing with that. So I will hit on that from the viewpoint of others than the children in that area, but a lot of times, many, many times, there's children involved too, and a lot of times parents will get so involved with the nastiness of the divorce that they don't mean to, but the children get set aside. They don't think of the children as going through it because you you can't really divorce your parents. I mean, you can, I guess, legally. I think some people have legally divorced their parents, however that works. But your mom's your mom, your dad's your dad. And a lot of times I think that parents who are getting divorced feel that since that will never change, it's not something that they have to worry about as much. And, and they just start worrying about themselves. People are, are selfish. And when you begin a situation like going through a divorce, a lot of times you're so worried about getting through it that you be, kind of become tunnel vision. You know, you don't think about the things around you. You just see what's in front of you. So let's talk about that for a little bit and why I decided I wanted to go ahead and do this because this is going to be a little bit of a deeper episode. And by the way, if you're listening to this for the first time and you're noticing a rumble under my voice, that's just the sound of the road, hence the reason I call it road noise. I usually say that right at the beginning, right in the intro, but I haven't said that in the last couple of times and I wanted to go ahead and make sure that... uh, I did say that, let you know what that was if you're a first-time listener. And if you are, thanks for listening, and I hope you will enjoy it and will consider downloading and subscribing all of the rest of the episodes. So what got me to thinking about this? Well, I I think about it a lot because I have two sets of parents now. I, I really always have. I've got my mom and my stepdad and my dad and my stepmom and their families. And so I've always had that. And it's always, for some reason, you know, when you got that many people in your life, you're always thinking about somebody in those families. And the issue of mom and dad not being together will be on your mind. Now, I'm, I'm fine. I don't worry about it anymore. And my mom and dad really did it the way I think it should be done if it's got to be done. But I do think about it. And one of the things that kind of pulled the trigger on this for me, and I made a note about it when I was thinking, what should I do as episode, uh, podcast episode topics, and I saw this billboard, and it's really kind of the catalyst of me doing this episode. I saw a billboard for a law office, 
and it just said undo I do and then it gave all of the information for the law office law office it was obviously a divorce attorney and that bothered me a lot I you see billboards all the time for law offices that specialize in divorce cases you see it everywhere when there's a highly populated area because it's a big deal in our country especially but most of the time they treat it with at least a little respect that billboard to me felt like it was treating marriage as if it was just something to throw away if you were tired of it undo I do as simple as that and I know where they're going they're trying to make the billboard and the advertising simple so that you would go to them because people who are getting divorced don't want difficult they want it to be as simple and quick as they possibly can they want to rip that band-aid off quickly so it doesn't hurt as badly or for as long or they think at least and so I know where they were going for that billboard but as a child of divorce that bothered me as a man who's been married for 22 years and I know people who have been married that long and longer who end up in divorce they thought they had a marriage or uh, thought things were going great or whatever for a long time and then all of a sudden they find themselves in the middle of a divorce to me that's much more serious than undo I do and so I want you to know right from the start, I do not deny, first of all, that I'm a Christian. I will shout it from the mountaintop. I don't make a deal about it on this podcast. I mention it from time to time. But, you know, it's, it's not the platform of this particular podcast. However, when I'm dealing with marriage, I've got to come at you from a Christian standpoint. I will not come at you from a secular standpoint because I do believe that marriage is ordained by God. I believe it was created by God. I believe it is ordered by Him the way we do things. And I believe that when we do get married, we do it in the presence of God and are made one by Him. Okay, so that's that's my Christian stance on this. And I need you to know that right from the start. But I understand that others don't look at it that way. Now, when you look at the statistics, People, it really doesn't stand out. I don't think that uh, Christians are any better. Well, I know it doesn't stand out that Christians are any better than anybody when it comes to staying together. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, one of the last statistics I saw might be that Christians will get divorced before secular people or, or people of other religions. I think we might have a higher divorce rate. I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the official statistics. What I do know is that the statistics of divorce and the rate of divorce just grows as every year goes by and so I want you to understand that I take this very seriously it is a it's a big deal to me so when I see a billboard that says undo I do that got up under my skin a lot and it caused me to want to do this episode like I said I'm gonna be talking to you from the standpoint of a child who went through it my mom and dad got a divorce my mom ended up getting remarried my dad ended up getting remarried I spent every other weekend with my dad that was my life I didn't know anything different than that I had kids around me who had their moms and dads and and they knew what it was like to always have them together I didn't and it became the norm for me but at least my mom and dad, like I said earlier, did it in a way that I always felt loved and I always felt secure and safe. And they did it in the ways that I'm going to talk about because I'm going to give you some do's and I'm going to give you some don'ts. But before I go there, I want to tell you the story of kind of how it happened for me or, or how I learned about it. My mom and dad got a divorce when I, th I think I was in the fourth grade. I want to say I was in the fourth grade. And I don't remember a whole lot of the history of that. I have flashes of, it's, it's like looking at memory photographs of my time when my dad was at home. And I remember he was a hunter and a fisherman. And so there are certain things from him being at home 
that are a part of my memories of my childhood, the gun cabinet that always stayed locked where he kept his guns. And we knew to stay away from there. We never had the issue of him having to worry about us trying to get to his guns. He had mounted deer heads on the wall because he was a hunter. So our living room had a couple of uh, trophies from his hunting experiences. And I think there were a couple of fish. I think there was a, I remember a trout and a big largemouth bass that had been uh, mounted, you know, taxidermy had been mounted on the wall. We live in the deep south and that's just the type of thing and the type of person my dad was at the time. He loved to hunt, he loved to fish. And I remember those things. And I remember coming home when I was in fourth grade one afternoon and I got off of the school bus and I walked in the house the the door that we walked into went right into the living room and I looked around and noticed that the deer head was gone the fish were all gone everything that was my dad was gone now my mom and dad had been divorced once before and I, I don't want to go into a whole lot of details I don't think my mom would want me to but they had, they had been married and gotten divorced before after we, you know, I had already been born then, but I was much younger. I was a, a baby, I think, when they got a divorce the first time, and then they reconciled and got back together, and then uh, the, the, the second divorce was final. And so I already knew that they had been divorced one time. I had a memory or some knowledge of what I was looking at when I walked in the house, and everything of my dad was gone. And I remember stopping in the middle of the living room and screaming, no. And I ran out the door. It's kind of weird for me right now while I'm recording this because uh, you, I will have edited out the pauses and it will not sound like anything funky is going on, but I'm actually having a hard time telling the story. I, I remember these things often. Uh, I remember I had this memory of me running out of the house when I realized that, and it doesn't affect me, but telling you this and really digging deep into my memories on this is kind of a, affecting me emotionally that I wasn't expecting uh, this to happen as I started recording this. And, and I guess that's good because I, you need to know how it does affect kids and even on to, uh, into adulthood. So uh, I am going to edit out the pauses because I don't want to make it awkward, but uh, I'm tearing up a little bit about this. Things that uh, I haven't teared up about since fourth grade or, or at least since childhood. Anyway, I ran out of the living room and I ran around uh, outside to the back of the house uh, to a picnic table that we had. We had this granite picnic table out at the back and I ran out there and sat on the picnic table and just started bawling my eyes out. Because I knew Daddy was gone. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew Daddy was gone. And my mom came out there and she started hugging me and holding me and con consoling me. And I don't remember where it went from there other than Daddy was gone. And then life changed. My mom became a single mom. My sister and I uh, basically lived, you know, we. my mom took custody. My dad you know, didn't fight. He knew as long as he got us on the weekends that we needed to be with our mom. But that's the story of me finding out about it, and it was emotional to me. And there was so much that went on in the next few years due to that divorce that I had to learn hard lessons, and, and, and I learned a lot about life growing up as a child of divorce. And so now I'm realizing just how deep it touches someone because, as I said, I'm, I'm getting emotional thinking about it now, and I'm 43 years old. It's two days after my 43rd birthday, and I'm 43 years old. I, I didn't realize those emotions were still there. But when you put yourself into the mind of a child and you see things from a child's eyes... You need to understand how important this is and how serious it is. It's not just undoing. 
I do. So never think that. This is important. And this is going to touch people in a very profound way if you're going through divorce. It's not just you and him or you and her. You have a circle of people, family, friends, and children, community all around you that this is going to affect. So if you're going to do it, it needs to be done with a lot of thought, a lot of care, and a lot of thought of people around you. I'm going to ask you to at least consider trying to fix it. I believe, as a Christian, I believe certain things about divorce as far as when you should, when you shouldn't. I believe there are ordained times for it biblically. I believe there are allowed situations for it biblically. And then I think that there are a lot of times I would dare to say, although again, I don't know what the statistics are, so I'm not going to say this, and I'm not going to just adamantly state that it's the truth. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I would say that probably most of the time, at least the majority of the time, the bigger percentage, it's something that could have been worked out if people would have just given it a shot. I don't know your situation, if you're someone who's dealing with it now or has dealt with it in the past. I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to uh, criticize you at all. I don't know your situation. I don't know what happened. All I know is this. If you have been divorced, then you know already what I'm talking about. And I hope you're learning to move on and the people around you are healing from it as well as you. If you are thinking about it or in the middle of it, I really want you to listen up. I want you to open your ears. I'm coming at you from experience, not from one who has been divorced, but as one of the ones that was affected by it. And you need to hear from someone who has been through that. So I'm going to ask you this. If you're considering divorce, at least try to fix it. You may be in the middle of that. You may have already tried. I understand. Again, I don't know your situation. But number one thing you need to do is try to fix it. You fell in love for a reason. I'm going to assume you, you didn't get married because you just thought it would be a cute thing to do. It's one of those things where, uh, yeah, no, I know it's legal, but to me, a real marriage has to have something to do with the heart. And, you know, if you went and got drunk and went to a chapel in Vegas, that's one thing. But if you went through a courtship and you fell in love and you got married, you did that for a reason. I don't believe people just simply fall out of love. Okay, maybe you fall out of love, but it ain't simply. Something happened, something quit working. Maybe you quit working. And if you're wanting to go back that far, then listen to my previous episode. I think it was episode number 41, the one right before the last one, when I talked about how to keep your marriage strong and energetic. Might want to go back and listen to that. Seek after the love that you had when you got there the first time. Try to find it. What was it? that you fell in love with her for? Why did you fall in love with him? Focus on those things. Meditate on those things. Pray about those things. See if you can get back to that. You, you need to try some counseling if you haven't tried that yet. Try some counseling. I don't care where you get it as long as it's a viable place. You might get it from your church if you're a a religious type person, you might go to your church and see if there's some sort of uh, marriage counseling you can get there or go to a prof professional marriage counselor. Read a book. But the most important thing you can do, the most important thing you need to do, you should do, before you sign those divorce papers, sit down and communicate. Communication is so often the last thing people do. People get mad. They get into fights. They slam doors. They walk out. They take a drive. They don't sit down and talk about it. They let it stew. And they don't actually talk it out. 
because they want to be right and they don't want to get in an argument with somebody else who thinks they have to be right. You know what? That's that's part of being married. Believe me, I know. I like to be right even when I'm wrong. My wife likes to be right even when she's wrong. So at least make communication a valuable part of what you're trying to fi- when you're trying to figure this out and when you're deciding and considering whether or not you want to get a divorce. Now, if you've done all that, you've gone through the counseling, you've talked it out, you've communicated, you've tried to find the love and it's not there and you're going to do it anyway, then I want to give you some do's and don'ts. Because divorce is messy. Divorce breaks things. If you ever, I highly suggest that you watch the movie Fireproof. It is uh, from a Christian viewpoint. It is a Christian group of people that did the movie. Uh, The acting is not fantastic, but the story is absolutely on point. And it's all about marriage. And they even have a fireproof workbook that you can use to help strengthen your marriage. And I'm going to go ahead and give probably that as one of my positive reviews. I have a different positive review at the end of this episode, but I want to add that to it because uh, Fireproof is a good one. And, uh, yeah, Kirk Cameron plays the the lead in that. You'll remember Kirk, Kirk Cameron from Growing Pains. He's uh, grown up to be a, a very vocal Christian and a movie maker now. He's uh, doing stuff like that, Fireproof. And in, in that movie, somebody... Uh, the. Kirk Cameron's character is considering divorce and he's a fireman and one of the guys he works with is giving him a visual of what it means to get a divorce. I think this guy, maybe the character in there had already had a divorce and what he did was he took super glue and glued the salt and pepper shakers together, a couple of plastic salt and pepper shakers and he used the kind that's an immediate bond once it puts together, once it's together you can't break it apart like immediately and he took the salt and pepper shakers and he glued them together and it was an immediate bond and he said that's what marriage is you get married you are bonded you become one one entity and he told Kirk Cameron's character to now break them apart Kirk's character said, "I, you know, I can do that, but it's, it's going to break. It's going to break. Either the salt shaker or the pepper shaker is going to break, or both of them. Something's going to get damaged. You can't just take them apart easily. Once they're together, taking them apart breaks things. It destroys it. You need to keep that in mind." and consider everything that's involved with a divorce, not just whether you're signing a piece of paper and you're not obligated anymore. Please don't look at divorce as undoing I do. So what are the do's and don'ts, Michael? Let's get to it. Number one, do. Let's go with the do's first. Number one, consider those around you. It's not just you. It legally... You're dealing with you, the other parent, and the kids. Unless you don't have kids. If you don't have kids, you can take them out of the equation. But there are still people around you. I just got on a rough patch of road, so this may... The road noise under my voice may be a little bit more than normal here for a couple of miles. Try to stick with me if you can. But consider those around you. If you've got kids, those are the first ones you've got to consider around you and make sure that you keep their feelings, everything that's going to affect them in mind as you're going through this. But you've also got family on both sides. You may not like their family. They may not like you. But they're going to be involved. And most times, at least there's uh, some people on the other side that you like and that like you. And they're going to be hurt too by this. Consider that and consider your friends and the community around you. I have dear friends that if my wife and I announced that we were getting divorced, it would rock their world. It would hurt them. 
They wouldn't just go, oh, that's a shame. It would hurt them. They would weep. And I have friends that if, if I found that out about them, I would. It would it, I mean, I have to take a day off and, and weep over their marriage. You affect people seriously. So that's number one. Consider the people around you. Number two, make it amiable. Be nice. If you're getting divorced anyway, it will be over when it's over. You don't have to constantly fight about it. And when you fight and when you do it nasty, again, you're hurting, and I'm going to be blunt about this, selfishly hurting other people around you. You're creating an explosion and not giving one ounce of care about the collateral damage. Divorce is always messy, but it can be amiable. So keep it amiable. Be nice. And when I say that, I mean take the high road. Number three, take the high road, even if the other person is not. It's two sides of a situation. The other person, you can't control them, and you can't control the way they speak or act. The stories they tell, whether they're telling the truth or telling lies, you can't control any of that, but you can control yourself. And I'm going to ask you to take the high road. You'll come out the better for it, and it's just the right thing to do. Be fair. Number four, be fair. Again, you can't control what the other person is going to do, and they might not be fair, but you can lay your head on your pillow at night by doing the right thing and just be fair. You don't have to give away everything. You don't have to be overly generous, but be fair. Number five, be positive about the other parent around the children. Talk up the other person to your children. My mom did that. My mom complimented my father in front of us. I don't know what she said about him behind our backs, but whenever she was talking about our father, it was always positive. She always encouraged us to have a good relationship with him. I just got off the bad part of the road, and hopefully the road noise under my voice won't be quite as bad now. But my mom was always positive about my father in front of us. She wanted us to love him, and she wanted us to have a good outlook towards him. So she was always positive in front of us about my father. Pay attention to your children is number six. Because divorce is so messy and it is so involved and there's constantly one thing after another, a lot of times you can just, like I said, get that tunnel vision and the people around you are in your periphery and that can get grayed and fuzzed out. So pay attention to the people around you and especially pay attention to your children. Make sure they know that they are still loved no matter what you're going through. So those are the do's. Number one, consider those around you, kids, family, and friends. Number two, make it amiable. Number three, take the high road. Number four, be fair. Number five, be positive about the other parent. And number six, pay attention to the people around you and especially your children. So what about the don'ts? Here's where I'm going to shake my finger at people who do this. You you may not. You may be listening to this, and if, if divorce is something that is in your life, uh, I'm not saying you have done this or are doing this or anything like this. I'm just saying there are people that do. It's very common, and please don't do these things. Number one, don't poor mouth the other parent in front of your children. There's a situation in my personal family where uh, a close family member of mine just had a baby and ended up divorcing his wife before the baby was born and now they share joint custody and they've had to actually have the lawyers and the judge make a statement that the mother of this man who is in my family basically isn't to speak unless she is to say something positive because she had gotten to the point where she was manipulating and and being very nasty to this male member of my family every time she would pass off the baby for his term for visitation and she would say things to the baby negative about the daddy 
as she was passing him over, just being mean, being nasty. And they had to have something said about that because that's not good for the children. You can't do that. And especially as children who get uh, on up in years and understand what you're saying, you've got to keep in mind that you've got to be positive. The children need a positive outlook about their parents. Number two, don't take the low road. Now, I understand that some parents are just trash. I understand that happens. I really do. I promise you. And I'm not saying to lie. I'm just saying find a way to bring out some positive aspects, even if the other parent doesn't have a lot of positivity around them. Try to find something. Number two, don't take the low road. When people get divorced, they get defensive. They want to just take the low road, just get it over with, and sometimes they even want to be vindictive and things like that. Don't. Don't do that. Take the high road. Don't take the low road. Number three, don't let your children think that they're responsible. I don't remember ever thinking I was responsible. I think my sister may have had some of those issues wondering. I don't know. I'd have to ask her, and I don't think she'd probably want to talk about it on the podcast, but a lot of children will think that they're part of the problem. Don't let that happen. You make sure your children know that they are not part of the problem. They are not the reason you are getting divorced for any means, uh, not any of the reason. Don't let the children think they're responsible. Number four, don't deny access. Most of the time, I think, custody is awarded to the mom. And sometimes the moms want to deny access even when there's no good reason to, to the children. Now, I understand situations do arise where it's not safe for the children to allow access to the other parent. I understand that. But if it's a situation where you're just being vindictive, don't do that. Allow children access to their other parent if you have the main custody of the child. Number five, don't argue in front of the children. All that does is create a negative atmosphere. It's They'll remember it. And you don't want your children to have that burden. So don't argue in front of your children. Number six, don't refuse child support. My dad was spot on with child support. Uh, Now, my stepmom worked in the child support office, so, uh, you know, she understood. But my dad has always been, even after uh, I was 18 and he didn't have to pay it anymore, my dad has always been the person who would support me and help me out in any way he possibly could. My dad was a hero when it came to child support. It was always there when it was supposed to be. He never missed it that I know of. Do the same thing. Don't be a deadbeat, whether you're a mom or a dad. Do not be a deadbeat. And if you have issues paying it, get with the right legal counsel and figure it out. But don't just let it go. Pay your child support because I promise you, if your kid gets wind that you're not paying your child support, what you're telling them is that you don't care and that you do not support them. And your kids will, your kids will remember that. And number seven, the last one in the don'ts, is don't divorce the kids. Be there for them. This is beyond child support. This is being there. This is being available. Don't be the dad that just forgets. Don't be the mom that just leaves after it's all said and done and you've signed the papers and it's legal now. Don't disappear. Always be there. If you're awarded weekend custody or every other weekend my dad had every other weekend and he was always there right after work to pick us up my dad was there for me don't divorce the kids too you don't ever have to see the mom again unless it's dealing with you know transferring the kids and stuff like that there are some things you might have to deal with mom there are some times you might have to deal with dad but don't divorce the kids too Make sure you're a part of their lives. Here's why. Children need reassurance. Children need a firm foundation. Children need to feel safe. Children need a positive environment. Children need love and attention. Children need a stable home. All of those things can be provided even in times of divorce. 
but it takes active thought from both parties to make sure that those around you are affected as little as possible. There's going to be brokenness. There's going to be tears. There's going to be sadness. That's unavoidable if divorce is unavoidable, but it can be dealt with, and it can be dealt with as positively as possible. And that's my message to you, that if you're going to deal with divorce, if you're going to have to go through it, do it in as positive a way as possible. And when there's kids involved, think about what they're going through too, because it's not just you going through divorce, it's the kids too, and it will affect them for the rest of their lives. Kids will enact what their parents model. I grew up because a child of divorce. I'm one of, I think I'm in the low demographic, the low statistic, because I have such a strong, vivid uh, ideal of marriage. If if my marriage, if stuff started happening in my marriage where I was going to have a hard time and we thought we might be looking at stuff, divorce would be the absolute last resort. And honestly, my wife would have to do a lot, a lot of messing up for me to want to divorce her. Part of that is because I believe in the sanctity of marriage and I believe and know what it does to the kids and what it does to the two people involved. I've lived it. So that's my advice from somebody who has been a child and grew up with parents who were divorced. I love my stepmom. I love my step and, and her family. I love my stepdad and his family. We've moved on. But it wasn't without heartbreak. It wasn't without hurt. And they did it the right way. So, I'm not going to go into a whole lot about my week. I had my skin cancer Mohs procedure done, and it looks like I have a shark bite taken out of my shoulder. I've got stitches, but the doctor was really good. I mean, there's been hardly any pain from, you know, as I'm recuperating, there was hardly any pain at all. I really can't say there was any pain when the procedure was being done, even when they were sticking me with uh, several needles over and over again to numb the area they were going to have to cut out. I just never felt anything. It, I mean, you could feel pressure and stuff, but it just really, I don't, I, I hesitate to call it a pleasant experience, but it was not a bad experience. And so that's really what I've been doing this week. Other than this weekend, I moved out of my other house. You heard about that whole thing in last episode. I moved out of the house we were living in into the new one, and we got just about everything else moved out finally uh, last night. And today is Monday morning, so we worked really hard over the weekend in the hot. It's August, and uh, it was the end of July most of the weekend while we were doing this, including on my birthday. And so hot and humid, it's been one of the hottest summers for an extended period that I can remember, it seems like, in the southeast, and it's just been miserable. But we got it done, thank God, and I'm going to be gone for a week, and one good thing about that is that I don't have to worry about the house. My wife will be doing a lot of unpacking, but I did a lot of the moving. So uh, that's what's been going on as far as my week goes. I have decided I was... I think I'm going to start looking for a uh, an office space because the house we're moving in doesn't have a place for my art stuff and a studio, and I really need an office space. And so I've got some neat ideas that are going to go along with that to help me pay the rent when I do find a place. Let me give you my positive review. I'm going to go ahead first and tell you about the Fireproof movie and the Fireproof book. Check that out. if if It's not even just for people who are looking or, or considering a divorce. It's for anybody whose marriage they would like to strengthen. Go and uh, check out all the stuff that's available for the Py Fireproof brand there. And uh, my positive review mainly this week is a Christian organization. It's LOTE.org. It's the organization by Pastor Chip Ingram. And he's got a podcast and he's got a lot of resources there on his website. L-O-T-E dot O-R-G. And there's uh, all kinds of things you can get. Resources and stuff on strengthening your marriage and all kinds of different resources. That's 
really why I did that for this episode was the marriage stuff that he has available, but he also has all kinds of stuff too. And even if you're somebody who's not a Christian, but you have some questions about why Christians believe the way they do, he has a wonderful uh, series called Why I Believe that uh, I listen to at least once or twice a year myself because I just love it. And uh, and it'll answer a lot of questions on why Christians believe what we believe and and how you don't have to throw your brain in the trash to be a Christian. So uh, look at L-O-T-E dot O-R-G for Chip Ingram's uh, website there, and you'll find a lot of value in that. So that's the podcast. If you'd like to get in touch with me, here's how you do it. You can email me at feedback at michaelblackston.com. Love for you to call the voicemail line at 706-408-7456. I'd love a rating and review in iTunes, and you can reach the iTunes uh, area for podcasts, the, the iTunes page for Road Noise by going to our website at roadnoisepodcast.com. Please subscribe. I'd love to have you as a regular subscriber so that these episodes are automatically downloaded to whatever past, uh, podcast player that you happen to enjoy and share us. We've got sharing buttons there on the roadnoisepodcast.com page as well. So share that, tell people about it, let people know about this guy that rides down the road and talks and gives a little bit of advice, tells you what he thinks about life and helps you learn to live life one mile at a time. I'm Michael Blackston. This is Road Noise and until episode 44, thanks for listening. <laughs>